Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Grizzly Bear Sims YouTube channel and welcome back to Green River. This is episode number 13 and it is a brand new game day. It is the seventh uh, game day of spring, so we are in the final uh, final third uh, portion of the spring time frame. And um, it, let me go ahead and crank our time up here um, at, to 5x, which is what we've been trying to play this map, if I can remember to actually do that. And, um, well, my phone started ringing this morning. Uh, the boys showed up early uh, this morning for work and uh, began positioning some equipment around the, around the farm to get started with the day. You might remember uh, we've got one more field that we need to open up, one more field to plow, um, obviously fertilize, cultivate, all of that stuff. Uh, we essentially have two fields left to plant. Those fields are both going to be soybeans, and for soybeans, we need the magic number of 50, uh, 50 degrees soil temperature. So that is what we are waiting on uh, for that. But the phone call this morning was, well, uh, let me, a little bit distressing, um, just a little bit distressing. And let me just walk around because uh, we left, uh, I left our truck or my, my Toyota uh, parked in the, in, the, uh, in the maintenance bay over here. And so we're going to go and check that out and see what's going on. Um, again, you know, it's a little sketchy. The details were sketchy. Uh, there was just a little bit of finger pointing, a lot of blame game getting played this morning as far as what was going on, what happened, and all that stuff. So I'm going to go and check it out for my own, uh, for my own sanity. Uh, from what I understand, it's a pretty bad situation. Um, the uh, one of the hired workers that uh, actually uh, had the accident is worried about his job and well maybe he should be uh, if it's as bad as what I think it might be and so uh, we're just gonna go over there and check it out and see um, and uh, see what's going on so basically like I said they were getting set up for today's work uh, to do some fertilization and a few other things and um, the one of the one of the hired workers was here on the main farm taking care of the animals and got called over. So he drove the case, uh, the case 1455, over um, to uh, to field. Uh, what field was it? Field number uh, uh, field number 27, and uh, to help out uh, get the plow and everything connected to the big cloths over there. They had parked the plow uh, over at the backside of that field, and for whatever reason. He, um, for this again, this is from what I understand, and I think that we can, uh, I think we can kind of cut through right here, cut around behind the, uh, the fuel station here and get a better shot. But from what I understand, he failed to set the parking brake on the tractor, and the tractor rolled away. And, uh, oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, I wonder where the heck he parked it. Did he park it up on the slope for it to roll underwater like that? That is incredible. Well, I tell you what, I I don't know what to think of that. Um, well, I own the tractor, so yeah, it's my responsibility. It's my mess, but I didn't cause the mess, and by golly, they're going to fix it. Um, if it's fixable, I don't know. Um, it looks like it's up to its axles, uh, packed in the mud in between those reeds and everything. Um, well, that's what they're going to do this morning, is they're going to try to salvage that best way they can. I am sort of need to prepare myself for uh, a total write-off. Thankfully, I have insurance um, on all of our equipment and everything because, well, that's just the wise business decision uh, on my part to make sure that everything is insured. So, oh boy, um, well, I tell you what, let me get on the phone right quick and, and, and call them. Um, well, I'm not going to talk to the one, I don't, I don't even want to see the, I don't even want to see the one that drove the tractor, uh, let the tractor slide off into the lake. So, uh, I'm going to go back over to the main farm, uh, make a phone call, uh, call and get uh, the other hand, uh, basically to take control of the situation, try to get that tractor out of that pond. Thankfully, we own the pond, um, and so if there's any cleanup or anything that needs to be done from a chemical or from a um, you know fuel, oil, stuff like that, hydraulic fluid, whatever, obviously we'll uh, we'll have to take care of that. 
Um, but uh, let me make a phone call, and I'll be right back with you. All right. Well, thanks for holding on there for me. What a mess. All right. So um, my head guy is going to basically take control of the situation. Um, he, you know, I basically, when I got the phone call uh, this morning, I told him, I said, go get some coffee, uh, go down to the coffee shop, whatever, go get some coffee. I, I don't want to see either one of you right now. And so um, the uh, the head guy, the lead guy is going to, I don't have names for these guys. I should probably name them. Um, but the, uh, well, let's just call them Billy Bob and, and Jack, just for simplicity reasons, because that's the name of my characters on all of my maps. And so since we're not doing another map that's going to conflict, um, it's Billy Bob and Jack. Um, I don't know if Billy Bob is a common name in the Netherlands, but it is now. So I'm sorry to the country of the Netherlands for introducing you to Billy Bob, but it is what it is and get used to it anyway so billy bob was the one that let the tractor slide off into the pond um, jack is basically going to take control of the situation and he is going to uh, make things uh, make things right or try to make things right billy bob i sent him home uh, because he is just right now in no state um, to deal with anything and so jack has a friend of his that is essentially going to come down and they're going to try to tow that tractor out of the pond and assess the situation. That's really all that we can really do at this particular point in time is just uh, kind of take a look and see um, what the deal is. But I will tell you this much, I am so excited to see that we have some green stuff poking out of the ground. Uh, let me tell you, so that right over there, ladies and gentlemen, that must be, uh, where are we? on the map um, that must be our uh, that must be our canola well gosh darn it Jerry you've got these tools that you can pull up and see stuff accurately um, yeah that's our canola so that's good um, I know the wheat was coming up so that's uh, that's good as well let's go over let's just take a minute or two and drive around over by field 13 take a look at our sunflowers over there and then swing around and take a, take a peek um, uh, or actually the Dutch word uh, for look is kek uh, take a kek over at our um, potato our, our not our potatoes our sugar beets and see what's going on over there I know a little bit of Dutch and I can put the amount of words that I know in Dutch into a very small teaspoon I think um, but I know some really odd words in Dutch words that don't you know I can't really form a sentence so I have to use I can use a mixture of Dutch words and I can use a mixture of uh, English words to kind of uh, to kind of form a sentence and it's it's kind of crazy my wife and I can uh, you know we'll often talk so here are our sunflowers boy they're looking good 28 percent growth uh, there on these on these bad boys that's gonna be a nice looking crop of course um, we're gonna have to get in here and get spraying because we've got to get our third level here are our canola uh, so the 28 percent on our canola as well that's nice and we're gonna have to get in here with our spray rig and spray this stuff um, we'll put down a, a, a mixture of uh, basically a mixture of fertilizer and some uh, some light pesticide uh, material that just will kind of help keep the um, the critters and everything from uh, destroying our crop but anyway so yeah back to my my language abilities um, yeah I know a little enough about Dutch to fill a, a teaspoon a very small teaspoon and still probably have enough room to park the Titanic um, but yeah it's little little odd words you know like um, uh, just I can't think of anything off the top of my head right now so let me just stop talking about that and here ladies and gentlemen are our sugar beets uh, just little guys just little guys but you know they'll grow up to be uh, nice mature sugar beets and that will go a long way uh, hopefully it will go a long way towards keeping our pigs fat and happy because obviously we make pig food out of um, out of sugar beets and out of wheat so yeah so that's what we're gonna feed our pigs on um, and then um, 
And then obviously the canola, much of the canola is going to go to the biodiesel facility. And then, of course, our wheat is going to go to the pig, uh, pig facility to make pig food and probably sell some of that to some local um, folks that make bread and stuff like that. And then, of course, we've got the straw, the straw we need for straw, for animal bedding and, and for uh, total mixed rations production. And also some of the straw will most likely go into uh, some of the straw will most likely go into um, the compost facility. And um, so, yeah, so this field here uh, should be blank. Yeah, it is. Um, this was the field, I believe, that we cultivated in the last episode. And it's, it's funny how I can forget, uh, even though I'm only playing one map now, uh, it's funny how I can still kind of forget if I don't uh, play um, and record, um, if I let a couple of days go by and I don't uh, do any uh, playing or recording, I can, I, can, I can forget. You know, I'm a... Um, I'm coming up on the big 5-2, and I know some of my listeners are, or viewers, I should say, uh, are older, and some are, you know, about my age, and some are younger, so, um, yeah, it just, it is what it is, so, yeah, here's where, here's where Jack and, um, and I basically told Jack just to leave everything uh, parked here, because um, I wasn't gonna, I basically wasn't gonna let Billy Bob fertilize today, that was gonna be his, his task, uh, to more or less fertilize this field while Jack went ahead and plowed it under, but I think Billy Bob is in no state or is in no state to uh, uh, to be doing any kind of farm work today. So I'm going to go ahead and just do this um, for him uh, while they well, while Jack and his friend um, uh, mess around and try to get that tractor uh, basically unstuck. Now the good thing is that um, and I'll have to call. You know, it's only eight o'clock in the morning, so. Um, Let's see, what day is today? Well, today is Sunday. <coughs> Excuse me. So today is Sunday. Um, the birds are singing. Well, the birds are probably laughing. The birds are laughing at Billy Bob for his uh, idiotic uh, mistake that he made over here. But uh, it is Sunday. I'll have to call and see if the insurance agency is, uh, if they have like a, you know, after hours emergency type um, uh, situation, uh, phone number or uh, answer line or something like that. I sort of doubt that they do. I mean, this is sort of rural Netherlands, and um, you know, yeah, in the U.S. we have the luxury of of having um, having things like that that are staffed and available 24 hours a day uh, to answer your questions and file claims and all that kind of stuff. But I uh, don't think that's probably the case here. Uh, but I'll just have to check and see, and um, you know, if it is, it is. If it's not, it's not. And, We'll just uh, we'll just figure it out. But otherwise, you know, what we may have to do is, if it's repairable, uh, if it's repairable, then obviously uh, we'll get it in the shop. Now that's an important tractor for us because that is the tractor that we use to uh, to take care of the sheep and the cow, uh, the dairy cows, uh, moving uh, straw bales, uh, hay bales, and such around the main farm area. Um, so. I don't know. We may have to may have to look into other options and everything. We'll just have to kind of see what we can what we can see. And obviously, I'm not going to know much about that today, or at least not right now, and certainly not um, not at this instant. So I will certainly keep you updated on that as um, as time goes by. Now we will come back together uh, for episode number 14, and we'll s most likely still be in this game day. Uh, or maybe not. Maybe we'll go ahead and progress to Monday because, um, you know, we still we're we're quite we're doing quite well as far as the schedule is concerned. And of course, if um, if Billy Bob and Jack can keep their heads screwed on straight and tight and everything, um, we'll easily be able to get through everything that we need to do this spring and early summer. Uh, because as I said at the top of the show, we only have this field here to plow and cultivate. And then we have two fields of soybeans to sow, and so that's it. That's basically all of our uh, that's all of our planting and everything done, unless we have the opportunity. Now I need to be very careful because the last thing I need to do after after laying into Billy Bob, um, the last thing I need to do is is basically drive this tractor off into the drink because then uh, where's the credibility, right? It's out the door. It's out the window pretty quick. But anyway, um, unless we by some slight chance, have the ability to um, 
turn those wheat fields around and put soybeans there, and we might. Uh, 28 percent uh, growth on those. I think they're 28 percent. I, I don't know if we check the wheat or not, but um, it, it's possible. We we could just see. I, I don't know how the geo. I mean, from a from a technical perspective for this map and everything coming out of character, I don't know how the geo is configured. So uh, we may not have that luxury. It just really depends on um, on how quickly the wheat grows and um, and how you know at what stage we're able to basically. Uh, get that uh, get that stuff harvested. I'm I'm kind of thinking that we're not going to be able to flip the field um, the way that uh, we were able to do in Midtown USA or could have done on uh, on Tazewell, uh, but we'll just have to kind of wait and see. So anyway, I hope everyone is having a wonderful day uh, wherever you may be. Now this is um, this is Friday. Uh, you're watching this video on the 25th of May, um, 25th of May. And um, it is the start of our um, long three-day Memorial Day holiday weekend. And uh, for those of us in the U.S. that basically almost um, live for vacation or uh, live for three-day weekend from three-day weekend, um, it's been a long haul. It's been a long stretch of, um, of late winter and, uh, and spring and everything to essentially get to this point. Um, in the calendar um, to where uh, we have a three-day weekend and um, it's uh, it's one that I always look forward to as a young person as a, as a kid I suppose uh, because we would always get out of school uh, the week before Memorial Day weekend so it, it might be we might go to school for like a half day on Friday this particular day that you're watching this video on the 25th uh, but most likely we would have gotten out probably on Thursday, uh, yesterday, as you watch this video. And of course, um, the Memorial Day holiday weekend is the unofficial start of summer. I say unofficial only because the season of summer, uh, well, we still have um, to get through most of June before we get to the actual actual season of summer. And of course, for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere, um, that is uh, what we're going to be looking forward to is uh, summer. I'm just going to get this little spot here uh, because, um, well, you know, we want everything covered uh, as best as possible. But like if you live down under, like our good friend Doug Zorley, um, his, uh, that's about to start winter for him. And it's just, I don't know, it's, it's sort of, it's sort of, un, it's, it's hard for me to imagine, um, especially like when we're in the heat of the summer, like in July and August, the dog days of summer, where, where we often refer to them as the dog days of summer, where it's just day after day after day of, of heat and grueling, uh, grueling temperatures and everything. It's hard to imagine that some places on the planet, um, it's actually winter and it's cold and, and they have, you know, the typical cold weather and everything that goes along with that. And I suppose likewise uh, for them, uh, the same thing could apply. You know, it could be their summer and and of course, uh, Dick Zorley, uh, watching his videos and of course talking to him uh, through Discord and everything, it has been quite a grueling summer for um, Australia. And I'm sure that he is, um, I'm sure he's welcoming, going to welcome in the cooler temperatures of, of, um, of late fall and, and of course winter and everything there um, in Australia. So that is that. But anyway, we are here in the Northern Hemisphere and of course, um, um, I suppose, kind of, sort of, uh, I suppose, and we'll grab the, these spots over here as well. Um, I suppose that we're fairly close in um, as far as where we are on this map to where we kind of are in the real world. Um, you know, the final stages of spring, that's where we are uh, here in North America, here in Denver. Um, you might notice, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a screenshot because, well, this story... This is kind of uh, this is kind of telling. Now we'll we'll see if uh, anybody picked this out. Let me get rid of these HUDs. Uh, we'll see if anyone managed to essentially see because um, the screenshot. I always like my thumbnail. I always like my my video thumbnail to kind of tell a little bit about what the episode is about. Uh, so obviously, you know, taking a photo, a thumbnail of our John Deere tractor, uh, which by the way is probably the best John Deere tractor mod that you'll find on the entire interwebs. Um, but I always like to uh, grab that screenshot, that thumbnail, uh, 
um, so that that thumbnail tells a story. It tells a story of what the video is, I'd say, mostly about. Now, sometimes we do multiple things within the course of a video, and that's all fine and good. But for the most part, I always try to let the thumbnail, if I can remember to take one, um, tell a little bit of the story. That way, when you're perusing through my channel or you get a pop-up that says Grizzly Bear Sims has uh, released another video and hopefully you're all like clapping and joy 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 and happy 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 and all that kind of stuff um, that's my hope anyways um, but hopefully you're all happy and ecstatic and everything that you see a new video from old Grizzly Bear um, and so but I always like for that to tell the story so I'll be curious to see if if anyone just in the in the opening minutes of the video sort of even before I really got into the storyline and everything and we drove over there in the Toyota I'm, I'm curious if anyone spotted the uh, the case 1455 buried up to its axles in um, in pond water um, boy I just can't imagine what that's gonna what that's gonna be so but you know like I said we're gonna have to we're gonna have to assess the situation we're gonna have to get it out of there hopefully Hopefully Jack is in the process of gathering up his friend. I know it's Sunday morning and everything, and I know that, you know, but we've got to, we've, we need that tractor. We need that tractor. It plays an important part on our farm, and so without it, we are going to be a little bit uh, behind, uh, possibly behind the eight ball um, with the rest of our uh, planning. So we've got to have, we've got to have something. We either have to have it fixed or we're going to have to replace it, but again, I'm going to have to assess the situation, find out what it needs, uh, find out how much it's going to cost, find out, um, you know, hopefully insurance is going to pay for it. Now, Billy Bob, I'm sure, is probably at home um, crashing open his piggy banks, looking to see if he's got some comic books that he can sell, uh, whatever. No, um, I'm not going to make him... You know, I'm not going to make him pay for that. Accidents happen. This is just one of the things that, um, you know, when you run a business, you have to uh, you have to kind of assume that certain things are going to happen, and you know, accidents happen. And I and I really think, even though I've had the opportunity to calm down a little bit now, because I was pretty rather upset, almost sick to my stomach, because, um, you know, thankfully, I've got to say this before I say anything else. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. That's that's truly that's truly the most important thing, is that nobody was hurt. Uh, hopefully, we can get the tractor out of there without anybody getting seriously hurt, uh, injured. Somebody's going to have to go swimming, uh, and I can guarantee you that that somebody is not going to be me. So um, Jack is going to have to put on his um, his hip waders. Um, hopefully, there are no um, hopefully there are no um, piranha or anything like that in there uh, obviously in the Netherlands we don't have to worry about that now if this were if this were down in the um, uh, let's say for example if this were were down in uh, CCS 101's new map uh, down in uh, Florida down around the Redneck Riviera uh, where that new map uh, takes place I don't know if I could find anybody that would want to wait off in there and tie a cable or a chain onto that tractor because there could be gators in there or giant big old snakes um, in Australia, there could be crocs. Uh, crikey, that would be uh, that would be terrible um, to find a crocodile off in there, um, wrapped around the or a big old snake wrapped around the axle of that tractor. So I'm going to let them deal with that, and uh, when they get it out of the mud, um, then they're going to give me a call, and I'll come by and take a look at it. And I'm going to go now and see if we can um, see if I can call the insurance company, and see if they have a a 24-hour uh, uh, answer line and everything, and hopefully when we come back together tomorrow. And again, I think we'll I think we'll come back in a brand new game day um, because uh, again we don't have a whole lot to do. Um, we need to wait for the soil temperatures to come up before we can really uh, finish out our planting schedule and everything. Uh, and I need to cool down and relax a little bit. Heck, it's Sunday, um, and um, you know maybe I'll go take a shower and. Uh, nine o'clock maybe we can catch the late morning mass and um, uh, we'll go and that'll that'll help chill me out a bit and um, then we'll figure out what in the world we need to do um, so anyway I do want to make one correction one tiny correction to a statement that I made 
a um, couple of videos ago, um, I had mentioned the fact that our dairy, our dairy was, I had said more or less, uh, and this is a loose quote, that more or less that the money that we were making from the dairy was enough to uh, operate the farm uh, and provide everything that we need. I was slightly, uh, I was slightly inaccurate in that statement. Um, the dairy, the proceeds from the sale of milk every day, uh, we have a milk uh, milk company come by and pick it up. The the amount of money that we make each day from the sale of that uh, takes care of the operating costs of the equipment, and uh, generally pays for the labor. Um, of everything that is involved, the maintenance of the equipment, the um, um, if there's any taxes, those kind of things, that's what that covers. It's not covering uh, the cost of our seeds or our fertilizer. Of course, our seeds and our fertilizer, well, seeds cost will uh, come to about nothing here after we get the two soybean fields done. And then fertilizer, obviously, we still have to fertilize the third level of fertilization for all of our fields. Every field needs to be uh, fertilized once. And then we still have to maintain fertilization for our grass meadows and stuff as that. So um, the dairy is covering the cost of the equipment, the labor for the farm and everything, but you know, everything else we are having to pay for. And so we've got about 49,000 in the bank, um, which should uh, help cover um, the cost of the seeds and the fertilizer to get the beans in. Uh, but we're probably going to need to sell some compost or something just to um, um, just to go ahead. Let's see, do we did we sell that? Oh, oh, we still have a load of um, we still have a load of load of hay pellets that we can sell. So that's going to generate um, some uh, income there as well. So anyway. Well, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, it's coming up on 30 minutes, even though it kind of feels like we haven't done a whole lot because I just Billy Bob, my gosh, I mean, the poor guy, uh, he can't win for losing. But anyway, uh, we'll come back together tomorrow. Brand new game day. We'll get into Monday. Uh, game day number eight will still be in the final third of spring and um, we'll get back to work. We'll have assessed the situation. Maybe we'll have some information from the insurance company and uh, we can begin to uh, sort of pick up the pieces from this catastrophe and move forward. That's really all we can do. And, and you know, at the end of the day, I'm glad that Billy Bob wasn't hurt. Yeah, I'm a little upset with him, and I think I'm going to let him think that I'm a little more uh, upset than I actually really am. Thankfully, we've got insurance, and it's all going to work out in the end. And this will give something for me to hold over Billy Bob's head for a long time to come. So until that time, uh, I'm going to say thank you for tuning in for another episode here on Green River. I hope you enjoyed it, um, and I hope that you will return, and I hope that you will have a very relaxing, uh, for those of us here in the U.S., I hope that you will have a very relaxing, safe, um, and enjoyable uh, Memorial Day weekend. And remember that Memorial Day is more than just barbecue um, and gathering around your your cooker, your smoker, or whatever. There is a there is a huge meaning uh, behind Memorial Day. There has been uh, prices, uh, lives have been paid to um, uh, to produce the freedom freedom that we all uh, that we all enjoy throughout the world. And that's not just uh, here in the U.S. But uh, there's all sorts of Remembrance Days and such all over. All over the world, uh, most all of our our allies and everything uh, have some day of remembrance to uh, to sort of celebrate and memorialize the lives that have been paid um, through blood, sweat, tears, and the ultimate sacrifice of of, of death to uh, to provide the freedom that we all enjoy uh, today. Um, and I my prayer always is for peace. And, uh, and love and friendship across the globe. And uh, I thank you for tuning in for another episode. There will be an episode of Green River on Monday, Memorial Day. And um, we'll figure out what in the world we've got to do with that case 1455. And I'll fill you in on that in that episode. Take care of yourself and also of each other and those four-legged friends. God bless you all. Bye-bye.